Hello everybody, welcome back to another Access Utility Modeling video. In this video, we will be learning how to efficiently and effectively model rails. We can go ahead and select our point cloud and navigate to the Access Modeling tab and select Rails. We are welcome to the Railing Modeling command. Before we begin, we can go ahead and segment out all the unnecessary data. In this case, I will only be working with one of the rails, and the rest I will keep out. With our point clouds in, we can define the path of our rails. We have two options, a horizontal path and a 3D path. Looking at our rail, I can see that it is not perfectly straight. So I'll choose a 3D path option and draw a polyline that best follows my rails. With the 3D path option chosen, I can select the polyline drawing tool in the command itself and draw my polyline. Making sure to start from the beginning of the first pole, we can use the combination of the end key to draw a polyline that best describes a path of our rails. Once the polyline is drawn out, we can end the line and create it. This will create a generic rail model that follows your path. As you can see, the base of the model has been loaded in where we drew the polyline, but we can easily bring it down using the vertical offset, but I will keep it here where it is for now. Now. We can define the parameters of the model by selecting Edit. We are welcome to the Edit parameters. We can start off by selecting the configuration of our rails. There are five configurations that we can choose from. Looking at our model, I can see that it has two rails and a tow board. So I will go ahead and select 2B as my configuration. Now, to measure the profiles of my railings. We can choose the shape of our posts, rails, and subrails and use a combination of the end key and the various measurement tools to measure our profiles. Now that we have measured the parameters of our rail, we can measure the distances. For this rail type, I require the total height of the rail from the top of the rail to the tow board, the height between the two rails, as well as the tow board clearance. With the heights measured, we can clarify how the ends of our rails are defined. We have four options, but unfortunately these don't match our loop end. So what I will do is I will choose any gener generic loop and remove this later in this video. After entering in our parameters, we can hit apply and move on to step three, which is to define the start post and the end post by selecting on the three polyline we defined earlier. With our start and end defined, we can use a measurement tool to measure the interval between each of the posts and enter this value as our interval.
If the interval between your first two posts is not the same as the rest of your posts, like our railing over here, we can use the remove option to remove each of the posts that are not lining up. Now that we have removed the unwanted posts, we can go ahead and use the additional posts option to add where the posts should be by selecting the position on the polyline we defined earlier. We can say no to the dialog that asks if you want to reposition at the original interval we defined earlier. With the number of posts defined, we can use the vertical offset tool to bring our railing down and match our point cloud. With our model aligned to our point cloud, we can compare how well the model matches to our cloud. If the model is not up to your standards, we can simply use the edit parameters to make extra adjustments as needed. With our edits finalized, we can hit apply and then hit create to create our model. Now, to remove the loop end, we must find the rail group created in our list window and select this. And in our 3D view, select the loop end and the post associated will be highlighted in our list and we can simply delete this post. Now that we have a rail model, we can select the whole rail group and use the duplicate function to quickly create a model of the identical rail on the opposite side. Perform some inspection and if you're satisfied with the duplicate model, then hit create. And voila, we have successfully modeled two railings. Check out our other modeling videos and see you next time.